Heat and moisture exchangers, abbreviated as HME, are small devices which are used in people with tracheostomy tubes, laryngectomies, and also with ventilators. HMEs are wonderful tools to use to help keep the airways moist, prevent mucus plugging, and protect the airways from dust and air pollutants. Since HMEs come in many shapes and sizes and can have different features, choosing the correct HME to use can be a daunting task. Join me this week as I discuss essential information you need to know about choosing the correct heat and moisture exchanger. HMEs usually have two compartments as part of the device. They are foam and paper. These act as condensation and absorption surfaces. For a more detailed discussion about HMEs, please see the video, Heat and Moisture Exchangers, Essential Information. Please note, there are variations between HMEs. Some HMEs have foam inside them, while others only have paper. The differences between the HMEs will affect how much moisture and heat will be absorbed by the HME and the amount of resistance the HME will produce. Usually, the larger the HME, the more moisture and heat it will retain, but it will also increase the resistance to breathing. In order to overcome the resistance, more energy will be needed to breathe. In individuals with tracheostomy tubes or laryngectomies, large HMEs may prevent the person from being able to breathe. Air openings are usually at the front of the HME for people who use an HME with a ventilator. In people who do not use ventilators, some HME designs use crossbars to prevent clothing from blocking the air opening. When deciding which HME to use, please ensure the correct size is being selected. In general, there are three sizes. There are infant, pediatric, and adult. If an adult uses a child size HME, there will not be enough material inside to properly absorb the needed moisture to keep the airway hydrated. If a child uses an adult HME, there will be too much material inside the HME, which will make it difficult for the child to breathe through the HME. HMEs are very limited by the temperature of the air. As the temperature decreases, the ability for the HME to hold heat and water decreases. This is important to know as the seasons change. In warm weather, the HME will be able to hold a lot of heat and moisture. However, in cold weather, the ability for the HME to hold heat and water will decrease. In cold weather, a heat and moisture exchanger with more absorption layers may be needed to keep the airway warm and hydrated. When deciding which HME to use, you will need to evaluate how the HME is going to be utilized. The first thing to consider is if the HME will be used with or without a ventilator. If the HME is going to be used with a ventilator, the HME must have an air opening at the front which allows for it to be connected to a ventilator circuit. If a ventilator will not be needed, any HME can be used. If a person will be using an HME on a laryngectomy or tracheostomy tube, it is important to know if the person will need to speak. If a person wishes to speak, the HME must allow for a finger to occlude the HME. This will prevent air from leaking out the HME and will assist in pushing air up the airway and through the vocal cords or voice prosthesis. Please note, using a crossbar HME will not allow for good vocalization. Alternatively, there are HMEs which can be placed over a speaking valve. They act as an HME on inhalation. When air is being exhaled, the speaking valve closes and pushes air up the airway and through the vocal cords. For more information about speaking valves, please see the video, What is a Speaking Valve? Essential Information. One example of an HME attaching to a speaking valve is the Shikani Speaking Valve and Shikani HME. There are also HMEs which can switch between being an HME and being a speaking valve. 
An example of this is the free vent dual care. The free vent dual care is put into speaking mode by twisting the lid of the speaking valve until it clicks into speaking mode position. When breathing out, the air is guided through the vocal cords and out the nose and mouth. This allows for speech to be produced. When the free vent dual care is in speaking mode, the HME is not active. The free vent dual care is put into HME mode by twisting the lid of the speaking valve until it clicks into position. In the HME mode, the breathing resistance is lower compared to the speaking mode. If the person does not need to vocalize, any HME can be used. When choosing an HME, please remember the larger the HME, the more the HME will interfere with breathing. When using an HME, the person must breathe through the HME material. The more material there is in an HME, the harder it will be for the person to breathe through the HME. For ventilator users, the ventilator will automatically adjust to the presence of an HME. However, the ventilator settings may need to be adjusted to prevent the ventilator from alarming. If oxygen will be needed when using an HME, there are HMEs which have oxygen ports. This allows the oxygen to pick up moisture and heat as it travels through the HME. In certain individuals, dead space can be an issue. Simply, dead space represents the volume of ventilated air that does not participate in gas exchange. For HMEs, this means the smaller the HME, the less dead space there will be. There is an HME called the Ballard 1000 by Avenos Medical. It is small and has a low amount of dead space. Being active means different things to different people. It might mean going for a walk or it could be those times when you're out socializing with friends and talking more than usual. The Provox Extra Flow HME and the Bloom Singer HME with Easy Flow are devices which claim to make breathing easier by having larger pores through the HME. This allows air to more freely pass through the HME. The larger air pores also mean there will be less resistance for a person to breathe through the HME. For individuals who struggle to breathe through regular HMEs, these HMEs with larger pores may be a solution. Please note, I have no affiliations with any company mentioned. I have not tried all the HMEs I have discussed in this video. There are hundreds of different HMEs. If you ask your doctor or medical provider for an HME, there is no guarantee the device you will be given will be the best one available for your particular situation. I only give company names for various HMEs so people can research these products themselves. Also, it is nice to be able to ask for a product by name so a doctor or medical company can find the particular item or something similar for the patient. And remember, please consult with your medical provider or respiratory therapist to find the right HME to use. There are two types of materials heat and moisture exchangers can be made out of. They are called hydrophobic and hydroscopic. Hydrophobic HMEs have a material in them which repels water. Hydroscopic HMEs have a material in them which absorbs water. In research studies, both hydrophobic and hydroscopic HMEs performed about the same in patients with tracheostomy tubes. There was very little difference noted between the two materials. When selecting an HME, either a hydrophobic or hydroscopic HME will work equally well. Unfortunately, there seems to be a lot of misconceptions about HMEs, such as HMEs can be used instead of a heated humidifier in tracheostomy patients who use a ventilator. This is inaccurate. Studies have shown that using an HME for 96 hours or more in patients who have a tracheostomy tube and use a ventilator will cause the person to develop hypothermia. 
This can be fatal. For more information about heated humidifiers, please see the video, Heated Humidifiers, Essential Info and Troubleshooting Tips. If a person has a tracheostomy tube and ventilator, please use a heated humidifier as much as possible. The heated humidifier will prevent mucus plugging and will prevent damage to the airway. Thank you so much for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe down below. I hope you have a great day and a wonderful week. Bye-bye. This is a really long video and I'm losing my voice. I only have one more section to film and I have no voice. So I apologize. I am doing my best. My ventilator keeps beeping and I keep losing my voice. So I hope I'm able to get the rest of this video done today. Thanks, thanks so much. <clears throat> hope you have a great day. Bye-bye. <laughs>